Greetings everybody, John Tar here and this is my channel Wiki Game Guides and this is my Xbox Elite controller review. I can in no way tell you that this controller is worth $150 because I have no idea what, the, what that quantity of money means to you. I do know that for most gamers $150 is kind of ridiculously expensive for just a controller. What I can tell you is that this is the nicest controller I have ever used and if you play a ton of Xbox One games or PC games with the controller, you will not have buyer's remorse if you decide to pony up the cash for the Elite controller. The first thing you will notice when picking up the Elite controller is the weight. It's 12.2 ounces. The Xbox One controller is 9.9 .9 ounces, and the PlayStation 4 controller is 7.4 ounces. So this Elite controller is nearly 40% heavier than a PlayStation 4 controller, and it feels great in your hand because of that extra weight. Overall texture and feel with the rubberized diamond grip on the back just feels extremely comfortable in your hand. Uh, it comes with this nice carrying case, two D-pad options, and three sets of joysticks. The standard joysticks that are on the classic Xbox One controller, uh, a taller version that has quickly become my favorite, and a set of domed joysticks like the PlayStation 4 controller joysticks use. And it's very easy to swap the thumbsticks and the D-pads with magnets that just instantly clip right on, and you don't have to like pull and pry to get them off and try out new combinations. Uh, it also has hair trigger locks that can cut the pull distance for the trigger in half with the flip of a switch. The short pull, pull distance actually created a problem for me in Halo 5 that I was able to fix with the Xbox Accessories app that I will explain a little bit later on. The controller also has a 3.5 millimeter stereo headset jack, which is the standard headphone jack size. The Elite controller does take some getting used to using the paddles on the back. It has four paddles that you can assign to any button that you want with the app. And once it's a reflex and not a thought about which paddle uh, is coordinated with which button, you'll wonder why controllers have not used this design for so long. Uh, we take controller design for granted these days, I believe. The PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4 controllers are all virtually identical. Uh, same with the Xbox S controller, uh, the Xbox 360, and the Xbox One controller. I mean, they all have essentially the same layouts and button configurations. And it may have been a very long time since you had to learn a new controller layout, just because for over, well over a decade now, you may have been using only Xbox controllers or PlayStation controllers, and you don't know. It, it, it takes some getting used to learning how to hold your hand and immediately hit those buttons, like, instantly. Um, so let me know what you're... In, in the comments, what has been your favorite gaming controller ever? Mine is either the Super Nintendo controller or the PlayStation 2 controller, the first one that had the, the dual joysticks. Now let's take a look at the Windows 10 app used to customize the controller. I wish this level of button mapping was available for every game and every controller, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One standard $50 controller and the Elite controller, just because it seems so relatively simple to do, but right now it's only the Elite controller that allows this level of customization. You can remap any button to any position, and with the four paddles on the back, you can pull off some crazy button combinations that were previously very difficult to do in the middle of a firefight. So the idea behind having the paddles on the back of the controller is that it lets you access four extra buttons without ever having to take your thumbs off the joysticks. So normally, for example, in Halo 5, if you wanna use the thruster pack and dash left to dodge a grenade, you have to momentarily take your thumb, or your right thumb off the right joystick to press the B button, temporarily not letting you aim with your thumb on the joystick and continue firing at the enemy. But with the B button mapped to one of the paddles on the back, you can easily press the thruster pack and continue aiming without a single microseconds delay. So it gives you a, it really does give you an advantage in multiplayer. Uh, thumbstick sensitivity is, speed is crazy to adjust. Uh, I've just been leaving it at default. I've used some of the other settings and I don't really like them. And having it on instant creates some very weird effects actually. It is so sensitive that if you release the stick from the edge to return to the center, just let go. The joystick bounces as it hits the middle, back and forth, creating a snapping motion in the game. Uh, the problem I mentioned before with the hair trigger locks in Halo 5 is that the default settings and the hair trigger lock for the right trigger, uh, you can actually cannot charge the plasma pistol all the way. It only does one shot at a time, but in the configuration options, you can adjust the trigger threshold to pull all the way with just half a pull for where the hair trigger normally stops. So all in all, 
$150 may be way out of your budget for a controller, but having used the Elite controller extensively, I absolutely love it and I do not want to go back to using any other controllers ever. Uh, so let me know in the comments what your favorite controller of all time is. Uh, and please like the video if you enjoyed the review, it helps me out a lot. And please subscribe for gaming updates from me, John Tarr and Wiki Game Guys. Game on.